The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 18th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that, I mean easiest way, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. And, of course, inside our Tigers Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow up 103 points. That's about four tenths of a percent to the upside. S&P's up four points, a little over one tenth of a percent. The NDX 100 is flat. Russell is flat. Semis are flat. Some flat markets out here. Uh, spot volatility index is down 2.22 percent. That's off 27 cents. Trading out at 12.33. Gold's back two bucks. Silver is flat. Lightspeed crude is off 13 pennies. Leading the charge to the upside. It is Snap On Inc. up ten dollars or six and a half percent. Chipotle up ten. United Rentals up ten. Pool Corporation up 9.40. Union Pacific up eight to the downside. Mercado Libre up nearly ten bucks. Checkpoint Software off about eleven. Italian Corp. T E A M is the ticker symbol. I like the uh, ticker symbol. Can't uh, pronounce the uh, the actual name of the company for the life of me, but it's off nine bucks. Uh, uh, AutoZone is down about nine. Sleep Number down eight. Uh, their sleep number today is eight dollars and forty cents, or seventeen percent to the uh, downside. So, what do you want to look at? Uh, well, I tell you what we do. Let's go take a look at our first request out here. This came in earlier this morning. This is from a uh, Rich D. Now, Rich wrote a fairly lengthy question, which is totally cool. I had the opportunity to read it. I won't completely read it here. Uh, in essence, what he's looking for is some direction on ticker symbol ABMD, ABIO Med out here, and primarily from uh, uh, because it's a, a retirement account holding, just trying to understand in the immediate term where things are headed to. So the very first thing, uh, Rich D, that we can do is put up our three time frame charts, these three time frames cover our daily, our weekly, and our monthly. And these show us our market profile. So anything that would be trading above the bottom of the box would be trading above support. Daily and weekly, most definitely trading below support out there. Takes us over to our monthly time frame. Now, on our monthly time frame, I'm sharing with you both the monthly and the quarterly profiles out here. Price looks to be headed towards 210 to 213. It's trading at 250 right now. Now that's based upon just looking, just utilizing our TAS market profiles, understanding that price is below support on a daily and a weekly level, and just taking a look at the monthly bottom of its profiles, the 213. The top of its quarterly profile is the 210 area. That's what this set of charts tells us out here. If we take a look at the daily time frame, I'm going to come out here to this set of tools because here we can take a look for 
TD set up nine counts. Well, today could be bar number nine. So it is a possibility, Rich. This would be more of a leading indicator tool than our TAS market profiles. It could be that today, well, it looks like today is going to be count number nine. Now, that would say if ABIO Med, if I could properly pronounce it, um, is going to form a bottom. That could be either today or Monday. Market is closed tomorrow. Uh, and that would be either bars nine today as the low or Monday, if there's a lower low, and anything that would exceed those lows would say that price is headed lower. If we just simply get rid of that TD setup nine count, we'd be looking at a price projection of 230. That's the one to two, A to B equals CD to the downside. If we go take a look at the weekly time frame out here, what we're going to notice is this week is going to be week number eight of that TD setup nine count. Now, again, the low, in this case here, because price is moving lower, can occur on bars 8, 9, or 10. So maybe this is lining up the weekly and the daily. Let's really take a look at this on Tuesday to see if, in fact, it has formed a bottom. Oh, back to the weekly time frame chart. One of the things that we'll notice out here, Rich, is that the swing point, and you had mentioned the A to B equals CD pattern. So let's look at the intermediate time frame. The low of December 24th, which had 2 million shares. By the way, uh, we are trading with 3 million shares. So we're below that low with volume. The intermediate term time frame has a larger A to B equals CD to the downside. Let's go ahead and uh, put that up here on our screen. That's giving us a minimum price projection of 178.58. Perhaps even, I would say, based upon this A to B equals CD formation, 128.06 out there. That's what the weekly time frame is showing us. So at this stage of the game, short of a bottom having formed today, which we would not be able to confirm until Tuesday, what ABIO Med or ABMD wants to do is trade lower. And you now have those price targets, I believe, to answer your question. Let's go out to uh, Palm Harbor and speak with uh, Jim. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm good, Steve. How are you? I am doing uh, very well. Thanks for calling. And uh, you want to uh, talk about um, Microsoft, which is at a new 52-week high, if not all-time high today. And uh, how can I help you? Well, for uh, about six weeks, I've been wanting to get into it, but it doesn't do anything but go up. <laughs> and I was one, like, it's got six weeks on a weekly chart that are all closed up. And on the monthly chart, uh, for four months, it's closed up for and uh, I don't know. I'd love to be able to get in it, but it just keeps going up, and I, I don't see an opportunity to do so. Um, and so in general, do you think it'll pull back if there's a, a small pullback in the markets in general, or it'll pull back a little with the, with the markets, or do you think uh, – Lost cause. <laughs> well, no, well, never lost cause because nothing ever just goes straight up. There's always some type of pullback, and then it's a matter of trying to identify, you know, is that retracement a level of support, you know, that would have gotten you in to the instrument itself out here. Uh, but you look, you're absolutely right, you know, off of the December lows, like most things, uh, this thing has screamed higher and it has achieved a new all-time high. It's taken out a daily swing point. It did this um, during the week here, uh, which was formed on March 21st and had 29 million shares. And it's been passed with lighter volume. But Jim, we're gonna go to break here. So if you'd be kind enough to hold on, through the break, I'll look at all of my charts out here, try to figure out what Microsoft is doing for you, and answer your question. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The TAS Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're on the line with uh, Jim, and we are taking – Jim wants to be able to get into Microsoft, but as he has described, uh, this thing has just been a rocket ship, hasn't had much of a pullback. And one of your questions, Jim, was, if I'm, if I'm correct, was, you know, do I think that Microsoft will pull back with the market? Um, and so what I have up on my screen here for you and I to take a look at is the Dow Jones Cash Index out here. And the importance of showing this chart to, to you and, and to everyone else out here is specifically we're, we're comparing the Dow, which in U.S. dollars, that's the left-hand panel of the chart, is in a consolidation pattern. And actually price is really close to the top of that consolidation, 26.616 or 26.562. Now, I would say chances are price is going to take out. Those are the highs from uh, January in 2018. I would not be surprised to see those highs taken out, primarily because if we take a look at how the Dow is performing in euros, that's the right-hand panel of our chart. And just so that you, you know, one of the reasons why the market has had such a limited pullback uh, really since December 26 is because of foreign capital that continues to buy into the U.S. market. It's fleeing out there. Today's a great example. Do you want to be in the euro? Most people over in Europe are saying, no way, Jose. Do you want to be in the Great British Pounds uh, with what's going on over there? People are saying, and we, we, can, we can look at this specifically with regard to how instruments are trading in their currency. So, Brand new all-time high today with regard to the Dow and Euros. Markets do not top, or the Dow specifically, never, never tops with an all-time high 
being made for the Dow in euros and not being made with the Dow in U.S. dollars. So what this really tells us is Microsoft may continue to move higher up until there's a little trend line. I know you're a chartist and you can just draw the same trend line from the high. This is a monthly chart that we're looking at the high in January of 2018 and then the high in October of 2018. That is very likely the price target uh, for the uh, Dow. And if I take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract right now, we take a look at it for patterns out here. There, there is no topping signal yet. Do I believe that if we were to get a topping signal that Microsoft would pull back? Seems logical to me. I don't know the weighting off the top of my head for Microsoft inside of the uh, Dow, you know, in the S&P 500. But chances are, um, you know, it won't, uh, it it, 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 it it, it won't diverge from the general market out here. But specifically inside the Dow, I don't have a topping signal as we speak. In the case of Microsoft, on a daily, and this is the daily time frame chart out here, as we look for topping patterns, today will be day number seven of a Tom DeMarc setup nine count. The last time that there was any pullback inside of Microsoft on a daily basis occurred after bar number nine. So if today's bar number seven Monday would, could be bar number eight and Tuesday bar number nine. If there's going to be a pullback, any slight pullback, any kind of pullback in Microsoft, that would be a pattern I would be looking at. So I'd be looking at uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday's price action out there from Microsoft. If it pulls back, then at least you know that the pattern prior pull, uh, you know, inside Microsoft on a daily basis generated a retracement, just as it did, quite frankly, uh, at the prior TD set up nine count, which was on February 26. It was actually the bar after bar nine, and then price pulled back, you know, just a smidgen. Uh, so if price is going to behave the same way, you know, I would be looking at that Tuesday-ish date out there. Price on a weekly basis continue to, continues to move higher with less relative energy. The danger here, uh, Jim, is that the TD setup nine count on a weekly basis, that high was from this little shooting star that formed the week of March 22nd, 2019. And price is now above that. And so it's kind of into a new count here and just shows the strength shows you and I the strength out here with regard to that topping signal. And the monthly price continues to rise with less relative energy. But still, um, you know, that, that alone is not some type of bearish reversal. So I'm going to answer your question this way. Is there a point in time where it looks like Microsoft might pull back? I would say that would be targeted for Tuesday and Wednesday. Is the market likely to, is Microsoft likely to pull back with the market? I would say yes. Um, you know, but can the Dow and Microsoft continue to wage their way higher? Absolutely. And especially because if you're wondering what the put is in the market, people think that it's Powell out there. They're, they're out of their minds. They're insane to think that that's what it is. It's nothing more than a global flow of capital rushing out of uh, Europe and into the United States. And we can look at chart after chart after chart and uh, see that out there. So does what, what questions after that kind of uh, analysis uh, does that pose for you? Well, uh, that's pretty much the way I was thinking, too, and uh, I really appreciate your input. I, I listen to you or watch you eat every day, so I really appreciate your program and your insights, and uh, I, I just appreciate, appreciate you. <laughs> well, thanks. I, I appreciate that, that you do that. That was very kind of you to say, and uh, we'll look forward to your next call. Okay. Thanks, Steve. All righty. You bet. That was uh, uh, Jim in Palm Harbor. If I, if I have that correct, uh, Florida, kind of just up the uh, street. So uh, let me just check, see if there's any other questions, you know, that have come in. Uh, markets are closed tomorrow. Uh, not the currency markets, though, so, you know, you can uh, pay attention. Speaking of the currency markets, you got the Dow, the euro down uh, quite a bit. Let's just take a quick peek at the euro. You know, where is the – oh, did I really delete that? Son of a gun. You know, I, they got it. We got to we gotta talk to these guys and have them put the X in a different spot, you know, where versus the expanded out. So now what I've got to do, and this would be a bummer, I'll do this during the breakout here. Let's go look at something else because I have to apply some tools to it. I don't want to waste your time. So speaking of, so let's kind of go back to Jim's kind of question. What are the general markets doing out there? Let's go with that lead out here. And oh, are you kidding me? Really? Oh, man. I got, all right. So what I was trying to show you, and I don't know what's going on with my system here, um, that 
that the that the Dow Equity Futures contract has been trying to form a new profile. It's kind of vanished right now. Um, but the the uh, let's take a look at the NQ. Let me see if I can get this one to stay with. No, even that disappeared when I just did that. Uh, look, as long as I'm at the NQ, it looks like price is targeting its monthly a horizontal trading range. I'm sorry, its monthly uh, uh, its monthly uh, uh, TAS market profile. The top of that box is 77.78. By the way, I said horizontal trading range because during the break, I went ahead and pulled that up for uh, for Microsoft, uh, for Jim specifically. And here, what I have is the uh, is the daily and the monthly. Where where'd the weekly go? Where did the weekly go? I must be having a uh, an input issue. I hate when that happens. Uh, so, hey, Jim, if if price continues to move higher, the next level of resistance, which I didn't provide to you, was the 128 to 133 level out there. So, uh, oh, almost shut that down. Uh, so let's do this here, folks. We're about uh, 10 seconds from going to a break. Ruby's got a question with regard to uh, platinum and palladium. Is looking for some type of uh, target, target uh, exit for half of uh, her position out there. So we'll try to do that. I'll try to get my other chart up and going. And uh, that's that. So I hope you're having a good day. And uh, we'll be back in just a few. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Uh, we're going to go out to uh, Philly and uh, speak with uh, John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I am very well, Steve. Thanks for taking the call, and um, uh, good uh, upcoming holiday weekend to you and your family. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, back Say, at uh, you. I wanted to ask you, Steve, a, a question. Your help, please, on assessing targets and breakout levels of the dollar Swiss franc USSF, that currency pair. And Steve, I, I uh, bring that up for two reasons. One, uh, just segueing your dollar priced in euros making new highs observation. Yeah. And I notice of all the uh, the foreign currencies that are or that excuse me. Uh, all the foreign currencies in which the dollar is increasingly stronger against, the one that is breaking out just this week, just today, is the dollar versus the Swiss franc, or in other words, said a different way, the Swiss franc is falling versus the dollar. Yeah, and folks, and, what we can um, see here is what John's referring to. I assume, John, you're just going back to the November 13th high out there, which was uh, 1.01285. And you can see that we're clearly above that level uh, right now. So just, uh, but go ahead, John. I just wanted to point that out to folks. Yeah, and this, pat you know, I've, uh, Steve, we're looking at this pattern. Uh, Tommy O'Brien has long talked of a market that has, you know, gone to ice built cause, then jump the creek, and then never look back. Yeah. This pattern looks eerily similar to that model. And um, uh, <clears throat> I'm just wondering if this is a lead indicator of a mad rush of capital out of Europe into the U.S., and we're seeing it happen first coming out of Switzerland. And of course, we, uh, we all know Switzerland is not uh, a part of the European Central Bank. Uh, and uh, that means something, and I'm not sure what that means. But uh, as a uh, clue, as a lead indicator, please share with us what upside targets we might be looking for if this thing really gets going. Yeah, so, you know, John, what I'll do here, first, I'll put on the daily time frame chart because the daily time frame chart, because of the break above a prior swing point, and, and folks, what I'm going to do here, and, and the swing point I'm I'm going to use for the A to B equals CD pattern is the March 7, 2019 uh, level out there. And so here's your first price projection uh, if this is a real breakout. And, and we'll just simply use the A to B equals CD tool, which is going to give us multiple price projections but the first one would be uh, in the 103 level, maybe 10287, something like that. Uh, the next level above that, that was the one to one A to B equals CD. Uh, you know, I, I kind of messed up there. Let me, I'd, I'd rather do this correctly. I see I grabbed the wrong swing point there. It's not going to change substantially, but I know uh, there's no reason to not be accurate. So there's the, there's the correct 1.03, really 1.03, and above that would be 1.041 would be the level. So it's a daily time frame chart that we're looking at. Those would be the price area moves. We see that when we put this on a longer term time frame, it gives us a little different perspective out here because we can see, yes, we're breaking above a, a swing point, but really from a monthly standpoint, we would say that the key level that the uh, Swiss franc US dollar needs to break above is 1.033 out there. And that takes us back to the, here's another creek, so to speak. Uh, John, for us to to uh, look at, which would be the high from November uh, in 2015. And that high was tackled and rejected in December of 2016. So I would say, um, and this seems to line up with the daily A to B equals CD pattern we just looked at. So I would think that here uh, we're looking at the Swiss franc getting into that 1033 level. And then above that, you know, the next swing point doesn't uh, really come into play until about a buck seventeen or so. Um, hey, the beauty here is we see, you know, a series of, of higher lows, even on a long term basis, and then a long consolidation period that has uh, been in play. Uh, when I say long consolidation period, just going back to about August of 2015 out here. So that's what I see when I take a look at it. Um, what say you? 
Yeah, Steve, thanks very much for pulling up that last chart. It's the monthly yeah. in Tiger TV with that 117 mark. That was a high back in 2010. Just an observation here. Um, yes. That you, the dollar Swiss franc has been exceedingly quiet now for a number of years. Yes. Um, and, and certainly, if it's been quiet for a couple of years, it could be quiet for another year. But it's, you know, you and I have both, and, you know, all market students have seen this sort of long pattern many times where uh, this is conceivably just a major league base. Right. And once you get going uh, in seemingly a blink of an eye, you get a major move. And uh, I'm always asking these questions, where's the next major move coming from? Because in these periods of very quiet market action, you get lulled to sleep, and then you get major moves, and you said, oh, what happened? And you look back and you said, oh, geez, if I only had been prepared, I could have made a bunch of money, whereas I hadn't much, made much money, you know, say, the preceding couple of months. Uh, and hence my question. And um, uh, Well, with... I think the cool thing, the cool thing, John, is that, you know, we know that if price can take out the 103 level, in other words, take out that high from the uh, month of November in 2015, uh, that there's a pretty decent chance that that 117 target uh, comes into play because this this so-called lull that you're describing, we can clearly see it in the green rectangular box on a monthly level, again, taking us back into 2015. And yes, we see a break right now above a prior swing point, the most recent one. Um, but we also know that it's really at this 1033 level where we've got its next resistance. So I would say we just take it one step at a time. Uh, above that, then you've got your consolidation breakout, your quick move as you've identified, which is a possibility. And, uh, you know, that that's what the charting that I, at least that I'm looking at right now says to me. That uh, picture of your measured move idea, that's very helpful. Uh, all dovetailing, potentially 115, 117. Steve, thanks so much, and you all have a good weekend. All right, you bet. Always good to talk to you. That was John in uh, Philly. So let's try to step over and take a look at the... Uh Wow. Oh, that's because I got the wrong instrument up here. That's not what I wanted to look at anyways. Uh, here's the platinum chart. Uh, now, as I recall, we, we looked at... Uh, we looked at platinum and palladium the other day, Ruby, and I don't believe I've got the current contract. So I'm going to go grab on my other charting system because you're asking me a very specific question. So I'm going to grab the continuous contract, which should be good enough for, for you and I for this uh, for this point in time. So you're trading out at 903.30, and you're asking me where is a good point to exit uh, half of your position. I'm going to do this. When we put up the daily chart here, Ruby, I think this assists you with that. We know where sellers have resided on a daily time frame. The resistance is the April 8th area. And so as price gets into that area, and we'll take a look at this when we come back from the break, the top of which is 9 20 40. If it can't break through that, it's probably a place you want to take half of your position off. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Folks, so uh, the Dow's up 112, s and P's up four. So, Ruby, when we take a look at uh, uh, platinum out here, uh, what and, and price here as we speak right now is above all profiles, daily and weekly. And that's really what I'm most con most concerned with in trying to help answer your question. And if we take a look at the daily chart, you'll see two different bearish reversal signals. You'll see the bearish sash out here and the bearish engulfing. Price is back above Stevie's green line, which suggests to me that it wants to continue to move higher. And so I'm just using that trading session of April 8th as a potential target area. At least, you know, sellers are, are lined up in this area here. That's what I would be looking for. Um, I don't see a reason to close out that long trade when I take a look at the daily or I take a look, for example, let me show you the weekly out here. If I pull the weekly across, the weekly is going to show that uh, two weeks ago, price closed over that solid green line. That was the uh, Tommy DeMarc setup trend line. And when you, when you close above a trend line like that, it says that there's a real change in trend that is underway. Uh, last week was a test of that level, as was this week. We can see price is trading above it and so um, watch that area if you're really itching to take a half of your position off uh, do it at that stage but the weekly says hey I want to trade up to 976 uh, as a level and that is really confirming what the monthly chart here is telling you and I we can see its TDST level is from um, March of 2018 and that high was 987 30. So it looks to me that's where, longer term, where platinum is trying to target. Uh, palladium, on the other hand, uh, you're looking for a target exit here. When the, this is the daily time frame chart, when the green line turns red or vice versa, but in this case, green line turns red, that tells us that the price oscillator of this instrument, which is the difference between the 19 and 39 day exponential moving average of price out there, uh, what it tells us when we see that in essence, kind of crossover. It tells us about the stalling of price most likely, but more importantly, it tells us that we should see both price and that line catch up to each other, which it did yesterday. Now the bearish test here, um, Ruby, would have been yesterday 
bouncing up to that level and rejecting it and moving lower. And instead, it closed above it. And today's been a test. And forget the solid red lines. Don't, don't pay attention to those. Those are no longer active out here with regard to this daily time frame chart. Those were support levels that were broken. But this says to me, this was the bullish test. And this says that you're going to continue higher. You're great with retracements. You can take a look at retracements from that Tom DeMarc setup nine count down to the low. Uh, but right now, what you really got was the bullish test you were looking for for inside of palladium so other than just a normal retracement um, that you could use out there I, I don't have any other that anything else that I could pass on to you so hope that helps let's go to Ron in uh, Denver Ron thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you today uh, thank you Steve appreciate it uh, uh, Steve I haven't taken this position yet but I wanted to buy uh, calls today I believe in this M I M E it's called mini cast okay it's, uh, Company, uh, cybersecurity firm. They sell uh, oh, cloud-based uh, email security services. Got it. They brought up the earnings in February and had a big jump. And this week it fell back down. And of course they bring out the earnings in May. And I thought I'd. I'd, I'd it, it, do you see any danger of taking a? It pulled back this week. It, would this be a good entry point? I, I would think in looking at this chart out here right now. Um, and what you and I are going to do is we're really just going to try to focus in on the daily time frame out here. And so this thing made a 52-week high. It did it with gusto, huge volume uh, on the trading day of February 12th. So it was wide price, but it was 3.4 million shares. And it's clearly been a resistance zone. And so price is kind of inside between that high and the gap. So I get I get you know what you're trying to do here because price today has closed back inside the daily profile bullish in structure because the center is closer to the bottom than the top I would be now I don't know if this is going to matter to you or not if you're asking me where where price might pull back to I would say 4507 to 4653 out there will it bust through that I don't know but that would be the more ideal type entry point if you can if you can wait on that as price would be pulling back it would be also then testing the april 8th swing point and that has 554,000 shares and if you're to see this pulling back with light volume into that area then there would be more of a trigger to say okay it's worth going ahead and taking that position if you close below that low which is 4361 we're not sure if price is going to stop at the 42.99 level or continued to move further out here so you know okay. right right now yesterday i would have given you a different piece of advice but we're going to go with today's information because price is pulled back underneath a level of uh, res of support that now may be resistance 48.71 and a perhaps another you know day or so worth of pulling back okay i'll wait and look at her next week and maybe get in then i sure appreciate it I'll, yeah I'll just just kind of watch the volume if in fact that's what it does now the other side of that equation would be let's say uh monday this starts trading back about 48.71 you know then then at least it's cleared your resistance level on the daily time frame and just recognize the last piece of resistance is the top of the weekly profile at 51.66 and in essence that level was hit with that all-time high so you you know that that's going to be your kind of your risk reward targets at this stage okay great okay, doke. thank you sir appreciate that hey, my, my pleasure thanks for uh, thanks for calling in uh we've got a question about uh freeport mcmoran inside the tiger's den this is coming from uh peak d uh who i uh, prefer you that peak that you, you know you change that alias to peak g uh but but that's okay i'm just uh just uh just joshing so Freeport McMoran, and the question is, where do we see it headed to and that you're long? So just simply starting from the profile standpoint, above the daily, above the weekly, bullish, running into resistance at the uh, monthly. So it hit 1045. The actual high this month is... Uh, what is 1045 where the heck is that coming from 1472 the actual high is 1468 out here so uh, you're long okay you know where your next resistance level is that's 1472 that's the top of the monthly profile and above that unless something else pops up on the screen here 1784 becomes your next price target that would be the quarterly time frame okay so we've got profile information out of the way let's look at the other stevie tools out here 
The other TB, the other STB tools say, uh, okay, you got to wave number six yesterday. Today, price pulls back. Test Stevie's uh, support uh, resistance line. It's support 1385. If FCX stays above that, wants to continue to move higher. Nothing here that shows us differently. The weekly time frame chart, which we said was above resistance, it's also above the TDST, the change in trend line out here from October 12th, 2018. This says that it wants to move higher. We've given you really the range out here. The weekly time frame would say its price target to the upside becomes 1814. On the monthly time frame out here, the uh, beauty about this is this made a bottom. What could be a significant bottom with that TD setup nine count. Uh, and it did that the uh, month of, here's the month of uh, December in 2018. And in order to clear its next little resistance level, I've got marked at uh, 1490. And above that, continues moving higher towards that $20 level. Peak D. I hope that helps you out with regard to Freeport McMoran. Best of luck with that trade or investment. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome 
back, uh, folks. So a uh, holiday weekend, as you know, and uh, everyone, uh, you know, be safe. Have a great uh, holiday. Uh, to, to try to wrap up the markets here in the next couple of minutes, let's watch the, as far as today's action here. Uh, the ES Mini is at a resistance level. This is the 2909.75 level. Really resistance for a couple of different reasons out here. If you're wondering what the market was doing this morning, maybe as it moved higher, uh, why did it stop where it did? Just you, and this is a 30-minute chart here for the ES Mini. And then why did it pull back and stop where it did? Pretty easy because it's the same set of tools that you and I and in each of our uh, uh, guests today by phone or by email or by um or by a, a instant message in our Tiger's Den, this same set of tools that we use, no matter, we're agnostic to the instrument, we're agnostic to the time frame. We just go ahead and apply those tools out here and it and it, and it paints the path, it lights it up for us. Take a look at the TD Setup uh, 9 count uh, and you get a topping. If you're gonna get a topping pattern, it's gonna be on bars eight, nine, or 10. It was bar number eight out here. Now that combined with, that was at 9.30. As price was moving up there, what else was price doing? It was running right into perigee. Perigee is what? Perigee is the point in time during the current lunar phase where the moon is closest to Earth. For reasons unbeknownst to me, even though I do have a kind of a reason why I believe it exists, but we're not going to go there, it acts as either support or resistance. That's why you're going to watch it right now. Now, price pulled back to support. Where was support? Well, it was that TDST support line, that red solid line on my screen. That began forming at 6 o'clock this morning. Price pulled back there, tested it, rejected it. Now, if we clear the high of the day, that's going to set up an A to B equals CD to the upside. I'm not saying that's what's going to unfold right now because I don't know. Because price is at resistance. It's clear as bell. If price cl clears that resistance level, you're looking at 29.17 or even all the way back to the high of yesterday when there was that big sell-off right at the open back in that 29.23 level out there. So that's what you want to watch for. Uh, other than that, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. My favorite polar bear. I believe he's your favorite polar bear. I believe he gets the Polar Bear of the Year award. David White, he's up next. After that, I'm not sure who's filling in for Tom O'Brien, but it'll be somebody great, that's for sure. And I'll be back with you on Monday. Take care and have a great weekend.